What we like to do is I try to break into four basic philosophical categories, all right? Number one is be yourself. Master your money move. I think it's great, all the NFL stuff that kids watch and all the tape that we can get from the best in the world doing it. And, you know, they show you great technique and great pace and how to do things. But the kids got to understand, in order for you to be successful as a pass rush, you got to be able to work on the things that you were given naturally. There's things, some aspects, some guys aren't going to be long arm guys. Some guys aren't going to be just jet speeding and, and dip and ripping almost that ghost move around the edge. So if you have a guy that's saying he's a big fan like Von Miller, sometimes you got to tell that player, look, I love your watching tape, but you're not Von Miller. Let's pay attention to this guy because he's got more moves that are in your wheelhouse. So I think that's one thing. When you get a guy who's trying to do things that he's really not capable of doing, that can cause a lot of frustration and pass rush. So keep it simple. Be yourself. Master your move. It's not about being good at a bunch of things. It's about being great at one thing. And once you become great at one thing, you can start building off of that. All right. So that's an easy one, but be yourself. Master your own money move. All right. Number two, get off, win the race, and eliminate space. In the run game, we like to create space. Knock back, lock out, big shit. Here we want to eliminate space because it's simple. Geometry, the closest distance the quarterback is a straight line. I have to get past a human being, in order to get there. So I cannot waste space and create space because space equals time. And today in today's age, you know, there's offenses that get that ball out in under three often and almost every time. So you don't have a lot of time to waste in the day's football, right? So I just have this drawing over here to the left to show you that like we have the race to, you know, and you could change the angles on this. Number one, none of this stuff doesn't get work without get off that I'm about to talk about. So we got to be smoking off the ball, eyes, not ears, we're focused on the man and perip the ball. In certain scenarios, especially if we get a dead cadence and we don't jump, now it becomes anticipation mode. So that's when, based off the play clock, not much time, we got to be able to take advantage of those moments. All right. So in those scenarios, would be great. If you're like a wide and you kind of know your technique and all you got to do is pass rush here, I do allow them at times to even pick the ball from a distance, but you got to have space in the right scenario to do that. Whole point is on this. With this eliminate space aspect, the O-line's always playing geometry pass sets off of our alignment, off of our tape, and what kind of athlete we are up front. So I like to set, since the quarterback launch point on average for the teams we play is six and a half to seven yards. And then some will step that up and really have to step and throw into the pocket. But I like to have the defensive ends. We're trying to race that four-yard mark behind the tackle's outside foot. If I'm a B-gap rusher, so that could be a four-eye or three technique, I'm going to aim for that three-yard spot, all right? When it's an A-gap, really, the more and more jump sets we get, sometimes the three technique is going to have more about two steps to figure out. The, the nose guard, whoever's going through the A-gap, he might have one step to figure out the set. But we're still going to race those landmarks because I'm a firm believer in all the experience I've had in playing with guys and coaching is you got to sell speed. you got to be able to have a fastball mindset and then everything is built and react or reacting off of the set and your leverage in relation to that set. All right. So I set these points. So like the four yard mark, the three yard and the two yard, that's really the strike zone. In my opinion, that's where you're going to be have to break down, get first touch. And then you still have a certain amount of space to work and get to the shoulder spot of the quarterback or the nipple spot. And we're going to talk about spots later and how, Guys got to understand where they got to get their body in relation to the quarterback. I like to refer to it as a shoulder spot of the quarterback or a nipple spot. In a typical four-man rush, you got two shoulders and two nipples. But point being is you get to that strike zone, you got to make a decision based off the set. Sometimes if you still win with your fastball, you can still work to your landmark, whether it's the shoulder spot or the uh, nipple spot. All right. So to kind of describe what happens here at the strike zone, I, I got the big ugly. So Sloth, that represents the offensive lineman if you couldn't figure that one out, all right? So from here, once you're at that strike zone, so say I'm a defensive end, I smoked off the ball, I have a fastball mindset, whether I'm swat chopping, swat ripping, swiping, you know, just a good old-fashioned vanilla rip, whatever it may be, all right? When you're at that strike zone and you are equal to the elbow or the hip or past that hip, Continue, finish your move, stack, dip, and finish. Your fastball worked. You beat them to the angle, finish the job, all right? Now, when you still have good get off, and this offensive lineman maybe wide sets you, jump sets you, his elbow and his hip 
is going to be in front of you in the spot. We have to be able to push off our outside foot and transition into a counter move. All right. And lastly, if we have this offensive lineman really vertical setting us and giving us space, like maybe you have you've a guy who's constantly finesse rushing, all right, more of a ballet dancer than a buffalo. All right. You're going to get guys backing up and waiting. Well, this game is about eliminating space and pass rush. So if they're vertical setting, if there's space, we transition that speed to power, eliminate that space, and put them towards the spot you're working on. All right. Now, the caveat to all this is simple. If you have guys that don't get off on the football, everything's going to look like a counter because the whole lineman's always going to beat them at the spot. So that's where this always starts and ends is get off, get off, get off. You react to jump sets the same way you react to counters if he beats you to the spot, all right? But I like to have them start with a fastball mentality, all right? I had a cup of coffee with the Colts, and I was lucky enough to sit there for five to six months and just watch Robert Mathis and Dwight Freeney. And I, being an annoying kid, and I knew I couldn't do what they do, I wanted them to say, like, what are you guys thinking? What's happening here, right? And they just preached over and over again, like a receiver running a route. The greats always sell – Fast, I'm going to run by you, right? I'm going to sell speed, okay? We have to create the same image off the ball consistently, and that is threatened with speed. And if you don't believe it, he ain't going to believe it. And you got to make all your moves look like that initial speed. Your first attack to that strike zone has to look speed. Then you have the opportunity to really defeat offensive linemen and react properly to the timing mechanism of how they're setting to you. Make sense? All right, so. One piece I always talk about, sorry, there's a gnat in here, just had to whiff one out, all right? So we have the finish aspect. So more and more like kids these days, they think that everything's going to be an Instagram perfect pass rush clip where, boom, I swat chop somebody. And, oh, the lineman gets beat and fall down and it's a clean sack. Most sacks are ugly. Guys have to understand that. Like a sack is a sack. I don't care how pretty you got it done. All right. But more and more, one of your breakdown moves is not going to win. So you're going to be in that position where maybe you're close to finishing and you need to finish and keep working your finishing move, your transition moves, your counter moves, your ability to lock out, separate and tie at the spot and make sure you got vision, be able to step up or step uh, back on the quarterback. There's different aspects of this. So when you're teaching pass rush, I have to drill and I have to really emphasize the finish. We can use a lot of different things to finish. Like in this picture, it's the stack and dip. So think about a fastball and you beat the offensive lineman, you beat his elbow and his hip, and now you got to finish. It's about stacking and dipping. Similar to guys who cover on kickoff and cover on punter receivers running routes on quarters, you run past and you stack on top. So in this picture with Khalil Mack, you can tell he's already stacked this guy. His toes or pointing to the target, that's leading his shoulders and his head working to the target. So this offensive lineman or the block cannot sit there and widen him and get him off his rush spot. Other things we use for finish, obviously cloth wins, all right? When you're doing rips, when you're working ice picks, or when you have maybe a transition off a long arm, we like to pin the arm, all right? It could be pinning the shoulder. When you spin or you counter, you're going to be jabbing over. Ice pick on the back. When you bring a rip, one of the worst things that I like to get off my guys about is people who rip and they just wave with this hand to mom in the crowd. We use both our weapons. If you want to play football one-handed, go ahead. It ain't going to be that fun. All right. So when you're ripping, we teach the recoil to be able to finish where I'm going to pull that rip out, get cloth and jab over. All right. It could also be continual swipes, but the main factor is use both of your weapons at all times. I'm trying to attack half a man. I'm going to work my two weapons against his one weapon, all right? That's going to be either the outside arm or the inside arm, all right? And lastly, all right, I think this is one of the most challenging things to teach, but you got it. And I still believe it. It's not like I solved the riddle here, all right? You got guys that want to go get sacks. You're always going to have to battle, like, guys that stay in, you know, quote, unquote, pass rush lanes. I don't call them pass rush lanes because the quarterback moves. All right. I call it the spot. So you have shoulders and nipple spots. So number four is angles and to the spot. All right. So when I talk about angles, you just got to understand, like, based off of the geometry that happens pre-snap. All right. You can have a vertical attack path and, you know, at some point you're going to have to push off and really work at a lateral angle. So you got a vertical angle and then what I call an attack path angle. That's going to be more going at the offensive lineman when someone is running at you. All right. Unless you just were willing to get blown up, you're going to gather your feet, 
you are going to show or prepare for impact. And we can use that in many variety of ways. When you do an attack path, that can actually shorten the edge for you. When you get this short set, you made him stop his feet and then you get vertical off of it. So just teaching guys that it doesn't have to be one path to success. There's multiple ways. And ultimately what's most important is the spot, all right? Our edge guys, or if we're playing games, sometimes this, this spot's gonna change, whether it's you run your text or your U game, whatever you may call it, all right? Your TE stunts, your ET stunts, all right? Now you have to teach like, all right, now you're the shoulder and you're the nipple. But in base four down rush, I try to get my guys to understand that a tie at the spot is better than a win off the spot, all right? Because one thing that's always going to be in a D-line coach's, you know, skeleton closet is all the times he's been yelled at or gotten after for a quarterback scrambling out of the pocket and gaining yards and getting first downs, all right? And you watch the NFL, all right? I, believe me, I, I love watching it. I, those guys are elite and coaches and players. But, man, I see a lot of big games that come down to Patrick Mahomes like against the Eagles, it's a five-man rush. They got five on five or five on six with a chip. And this guy escapes the pocket. And then that sets up whether or not they should have had an incomplete or have a field goal. That doesn't happen if there wasn't a 30-yard scramble by Patrick Mahomes. All right. So no matter how good your guys are, it's still something that's always battled. All right. So what I try to tell them is this, like understanding and what's difficult is when you're an aggressive, competitive defense alignment, you're going to think you can win all the time. So when guys are rushing certain ways, they, their clock is going, they're thinking, I'm going to beat them, I'm going to beat them, but then they realize maybe they're too deep or they're too wide. And then at certain point, whether it's the strike zone at four, three, or two, or maybe you're at the quarterback depth, that's really make or break decision time. Are you going to keep straining to win and possibly get off the spot? Or are you willing to understand that a tie at the spot is almost as valuable? All right. And a lot of times it's more valuable because it takes all four of us for one of us to make a sack. All right. So those guys, that's what you have to say. Like, look, right here, you should really be thinking more transition or convert to power or convert to counter. All right. Because in these drawings down here, it's real simple. If I have a D lineman and O lineman engaged, 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 and everyone's at their spot, there's nowhere for that quarterback to step up. There's nowhere he can step out. All right. Now you look at the other picture over here. And if one guy gets ran by or one guy gets put out wide, now we have room for the quarterback to exit the pocket. So it's challenging. You have to really harp on it. And like when I grade, as long as you're tying and you finish with like, I got some separation of vision and I'm tying at the spot, you're not going to get a minus. You know, I mean, everybody like I grade like one on one pass rush, like, did you win or did you lose? But there is a caveat of, oh, he tied at the spot. So. I get my guys to understand like that's not bad.